Hello, welcome to the second session of the Mixed Media Collage course. Today we are going to be exploring landscapes um, using collage with pen and wash. So here's a couple of examples of, of ones I've done earlier. These are obviously moorland scenes. Um, I've used some newspaper here and some brown paper and again some different sorts of brown papers and um, newspaper stuck down and then as I should demonstrate before the pen the pen and wash over the top. Now today I'm going to, instead of doing a moorland scene, I'm going to base my image on this mixed media painting that I did a long time ago. I just thought actually um, birch trees would lend themselves really nicely to sort of using color, um, text and things as a collage. So that's what we're going to be doing in this session. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, I'm using a slightly longer format this time, only because I made a little bit of a mistake. I actually um, realised when I did the collage that I hadn't left enough, enough foreground. So I've actually ripped the edge of the watercolour paper and actually stuck another piece on, which I actually quite like having a longer format actually for this one. I've used newspaper text for um, my birch trees. Um, I've again used lots of little pieces and I've actually then stuck on sort of going crosswards to get the texture on the trees, I've actually selected different size text and actually put across to get the sort of markings on the trees. I've used some ma old map pages, newspaper and some brown paper to sort of get some sort of the mid-ground sort of hills um, on here. So I've obviously, I've done this previously, I've let it all dry. Um, this will, again, I did it beforehand because this actually takes quite a long time. Again, that took probably about an hour and a half to actually compose that and actually get it all stuck down. So I'm now going to paint the sky area before we move on to do anything else. Now the colours I'm going to be using today, I'm going to be using cobalt blue for the sky. I've also got um, some phthalo blue, lemon yellow and cadmium yellow, which I'm going to be using sort of for the, the foreground green, different greens. I'm also going to be using some a little touches of burnt umber, possibly mixed with some phthalo to get some nice sort of areas of, I'm going to do some sort of distant trees here in the foreground, but I want them to be quite hazy and sort of far away. So I'm going to be using sort of bluey, bluey greens, um, the dark bluey greens, which um, blue and brown mixed together create some really nice shades. So I'm going to be doing that. Okay. And then I'm going to hopefully splatter in the foreground some little wildflowers. That's the plan. So starting off with the sky. I'm going to um, thoroughly wet the paper, get myself a bit of tissue ready. It's up to you, whatever colour sky you fancy. I just thought cobalt blue is not too bright and in your face, but um, still fairly summery looking. You could, you could paint a sort of much more moody sky if you want to in there, but I just thought quite a pale background for the trees to stand out against. I didn't want it to be to any face. So I'm just going to probably, because I've actually got this collage like this, I may have to work in sections on the sky. I'll just see how I get on. Wetting the paper thoroughly first. There we are. Now, a little bit of cobalt blue. Again, I want it slightly diluted. Not too strong. I'm going to go in and I may have to, because I've got sections, I'm going to go work my way down one section at a time. I wouldn't normally do it like this because I can't obviously go straight across, can I, because of the, the trees are in the way. There we are. And what I might have to do before it dries, I'm going to have to lift out clouds from that section. So it's like an odd way of working, but So I've just got some sort of cloudy effects in the sky there. All right. So then I can go on and do the next section. Work your way down. Oh, paint pale. And again, I'm going to lift out some clouds, so carry on the cloud that I started over there. There. That's fine. Next section. 
Menschen. clean bit of tissue make sure you turn your tissue so you've got a clean bit and then I'm going to come in and get out some more cloud areas more last oopsie daisy picked up the wrong color then on my brush dear last section as you see because i've got collage i haven't got my paper taped down what i've done to stop it moving around quite so much though i've actually put a little bit of masking tape on the back um, sort of folded it over so or you could use blue tack just to hold it on to down a little bit we've got a little bit there look missed we are. I've just covered a few clouds in here. It's drying. It's really dry actually. Paper's dried before I got to this section. That's fine though. That just gives the illusion of a something going on in the sky that's fine so what I need to do now is get that dried off before I move on and I'm going to put some distant trees in before we do any pen work okay so I've dried off the sky and now what I've done I've just um, mixed up some colors and I'm going to try and do some sort of distant fir trees sort of running along here now what I've done I've mixed up um, some cobalt blue with a tiny touch of the rose and madder, I decided to make these very distant trees slightly more purpley. With a tiny, tiny touch of the brown to make a sort of deep purpley colour, grey sort of purple. And then I've used phthalo blue with a little bit of um, the burnt umber to make a sort of more of a sort of deep, deep greeny sort of colour. So the plan is I'm going to try and do some sort of loose fir tree sort of shapes along here. And then I'm going to add... With the purple and then put some slightly more um, greeny trees in the in the foreground so right i'm going to start off not wetting the paper at all for this and i'm just going to use a sort of gray purple color to try to do a few little distant fir tree shapes so i'm just going to come along here and then work my way down section by section really and bring that down to the hills and I'm going to go over that obviously with another colour so I mean I want them to be fairly palish looking Just some vague shapes, really. You don't need any detail. Okay. That's all you need for that, I think. A few more here. into the distance there we are so I am now going to use my dryer brush use my other color and it might because I could either dry this so that I've got nice crisp shapes or if this is still damp which it is it will be a bit more of a blurry line which I'm quite happy about so I'm gonna just go in and actually do some 
areas here that are, they're going to be obviously a bit more fuzzy and blurry i'm happy with that don't mind that at all they will just sort of merge hopefully a little bit I might even just, I don't mind them flowing slightly, that's fine, they're really soft. I'm going to go in and daub some colour just so they're not completely all one colour. You've got some slightly darker and lighter areas. Which is... Just trying to keep the tops pointy looking. do and I can get that dried off and we can get on and do some pen work then. Okay so all dried off again and now I'm going to work on the trees using my pen. So I'm obviously going to come down and actually create some, some edges and I might go in and put in a few little twiggy bits in a minute. So I'm just going to come down and do both edges to define those. I just do want to show you, and then I'm going to come in and just put in a few more little markings. So I'm just going to scribble away a little bit, scribbly marks. And I'm going to work on one edge, um, particularly because I, I always think it looks slightly better if you have one slightly darker edge and a lighter edge to a tree. It just makes it look a little bit more rounded and 3D. So I'm going to come in and actually do some sort of wiggly marks to represent the lovely markings and texture on the bark that you get on birch trees. down and actually do a little bit of work on the base that's it and then decide do I want to have some little twiggy bits coming off so I can actually just with my pen just come in and actually just do a few little little bits coming off a nicer feel to what we're going to even do. There. Okay, so what I'm going to do with, I'm going to carry on and do all the trees in a similar way and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've worked my way over and done all the trees. Now um, to do some pen lines on the mid-ground. So I'm just going to outline some of these, these areas here. Now I haven't decided yet where I've got this newspaper collaged here with the brown paper. I'm not sure whether to leave that as a snowy top on this hill or to colour it in. So I shall have to sort of make that decision in a while. I just thought I'd just wait and see what it looks like really. Um, So I'm not going to put too much detail on the newspaper. I've got a bit more detail on this, this area here. Just a few sort of craggy, scribbly marks. And again here. And again, I'm going to build my way around 
and to move. I work my way down here and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've worked my way and done some sort of marks on the tops of the hills. I've also done a little bit, a little few marks down here. Now the next stage is just to get um, some water and to wet those marks before we do anything else. So I'm going to come in and actually do the hills first and actually do some, let the colour sort of flow down a little bit. You'll find, on depending on what you've used for your collage, the pen will run differently. On the newspaper it runs really nicely, but on this brown paper it's a bit more absorbent and it doesn't seem to run very much. It sort of stays where you put it a bit more. It runs quite nicely on the maps that I've used here for the, the greener areas. I'm just going to let that puddle down a little bit. Yeah. And if we come and get that on here. Puddle down a little bit. Drag it down here a little bit. There we are. So now I'm going to come to wet the tree areas. So making sure the lines run inwards in, into the trunk rather than outside. So I'm wetting this side of the line each time. It's up to you whether you wet these little branchy areas or not. You may like to just leave them as they are. see that hopefully you can see that that um, shows up the marking show up really quite nicely on this newspaper and um, we get a really quite nice effect of birch tree bark which works quite well so I'm just lightly touching where I've put the pen and letting it puddle a little bit so I'm going to do all the trunks and then I'm just going to touch some of the little branchy areas. I'm not going to do all of them. Some of them I want to just leave very little twiggy bits. Working my way around quite quickly as you can see. I'll just finish this one off and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so <clears throat> it's all now nice and dry now. And what I'm going to do is actually going to start painting the foreground. I'm going to use some lemon yellow and some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to daub this on using the side of my brush and sort of dragging it. So I'm going to get patches of different colour and then I'm going to go in with some blues. So I'm going to get different shades of green. some cadmium, a bit of cadmium yellow in there, just a touch because it's quite bright cadmium yellow. Okay, I'm going to come in now with some phthalo blue. Again, I'm just going to daub that using the side of my brush. I'll get sort of patches of colour appearing. Mm. 
keeping it quite loose. I might go in with a little bit of just a touch of cobalt blue. I don't want too much because it's going to make it quite a dull green. Just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it run again because I like doing it. <laughs> so I'm going to let it run and flow a little bit. So just a bit more. Soften it off a little. Just trying to get rid of any white patches that I've got here that I don't want really. And I'm just going to soften that those edges with just clean water really, just so the paint runs into those areas there. And I may just go in with a tiny bit more phthalo blue, I think. A couple of areas. Actually, I'm just using, as you can see, the side of my brush, which I think works quite well. It gives you um, sort of rolling it rather than painting too carefully. Spot some water on that. That's better. Let it run around a bit. Now, I haven't painted the distant hills, as you can see, the mid sort of ground hills at all. I've, only because I decided I quite like them as they were, but um, just there, I might just a tiny bit, tiny bit of colour to blend that in a little bit. That's better. There. So I'm now going to just dry this off and um, do some spattering for wildflowers. So I have now covered up all this area that I don't want any splatters to get onto, the trees in the sky and the hills, the tissue, so that I hopefully won't get any splatters and I'm going to do some splattering here. I'm going to use some yellows, um, some pinks and I may even use a little bit of white, which I don't normally use with watercolours, but um, it might look quite nice to have some white daisies coming in here. So start off with some lemon yellow. See, I'm not sure if that's going to show up enough, so I'm going to just come in and do a few stuff. No, it's not sharp. Sure. I didn't want, I wondered if it might not be quite strong enough. I'm going to have to go with cadmium yellow, I think, to get it to show up. So I'll swap and use some brighter, brighter cadmium. That's better. That's showing up a little bit. Do a few splatters. I'm going to go in and put some pinks in, in here as well. So I'm going to be using, you can either use rose madder, I'm going to be using a little bit of permanent rose. Or you can even do red for poppies if you'd like. Although they do grow more in fields rather than in woodland. So I'm trying to sort of get the feel of a wood edge, the edge of a woodland and the little flowers you get appearing in the springtime. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get my palette knife with some water on it and just flick with water, which always works really well because the paint starts to flow a little bit into the water and it gives a soften, softens the effect, which is good. Now, I'm just 
gonna the red and the yellow are running together so I'm just gonna just daub that a little bit some of that yellow is a little bit better puddling a little I'm gonna pop some of those where they've puddled just a bit too much soft just softens it off nicely it's lovely and I might just put a few little white splatters in there I think I might dry it off first and then I'm going to put some white splatters otherwise it's going to merge with the colours and I'm going to get fun some funny colours happening so I'm just going to dry it off okay I've dried it off I'm now going to pat a few little white white splatters around as well Soften those a little bit with a bit of water, just a touch. Now I'm going to dry this off, and then I'm just going to put work on the, this foreground a little bit with a pen, and do some little grassy areas. I think just to finish it off okay okay so all nice and dry now so I'm actually going to add a little bit more of a little grassy bank here in the foreground to bring it forward and do some grassy stems so just taking my fine liner just going to do a little bit of a wiggle here just so I'm actually going to have a little bit of detail And I'm actually going to maybe here as well, just a tiny touch, just bring that down a little bit. So you've got something going on, and I'm going to do a few little grassy stems, just some sort of scribbly. grassy maybe around some of the edges of the trees as well that's better doesn't all look like two separate pictures now that's sort of brought it a bit more in line I think I might just wet those and also just add a few little grassy stems with a fine brush as well. So just gonna I'm actually gonna use my fine brush to wet those so that I don't go too mad with the water. So I'm just gonna soften those with a little bit of water. Actually I'll use my bigger one. It's a bit too tiny. And I'm just gonna Soften that in a little bit, that's better. Just soften that edge. There we are, that's good. And then what I'm gonna do is with my fine brush, I'm going to do some little grassy stems. I'm gonna use some phthalo, blue and some cadmium yellow I think just to do a few little stems so I'm going to come in and actually just do just a few little stems in the foreground here okay 
Then there's some caffeine in there. Might just darken the base a little bit where I've got these. I might just come in and make them a bit more of a mound. Just darken that off a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Too much. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's enough, I think. There we go. So I'll just take it off the board here. There we are, because you can see it a bit better on the white paper, can't you? There we are, all finished. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll have a go. I mean, this lends itself to all sorts of different landscapes. It doesn't have to be a woodland scene. Moorland scenes work really well. River scenes with rocks in. Anything really, have a go. And um, dry stone walls actually work really well as well, sort of making little rocky areas. So I'd, if you do have a go and, and you've enjoyed it, please would you share what you do on our Facebook page, which the details will be coming up. And also there'll be a slideshow of um, some different types of landscapes that students have created in some of my classes. Thank you ever so much. Next time we're going to be looking at using collage to create textured backgrounds, which we're going to be painting over with acrylics. So I hope you join me for the next session. Thank you. Bye.